Okay, so people have been asking about seeing uh, me work on a car, like actually work on a car and not just talk to the camera. Um, so I figured why not give it a go. Light's running out, end of the day. Uh, so hopefully it's got this thing whacked on, like wide open on everything. So fingers crossed it's all right. Um, so yeah, working on a car. Uh, I've got my cat penis gloves ready. That's um, texture, not made of. Uh, so uh, it's not work on the Integra, unfortunately, because that's still sitting dormant, waiting for, uh, well, waiting for fucking everything, really. Um, I'm recording the audio on my GoPro with a Bluetooth mic, and then the visual with a DSLR on a, and I'm holding up the freaking tripod, which I lost the um, quick release mount on, so it's sort of duct taped to it at the moment, but uh, it's already getting heavy, like holding it out arms, arms length. I'll do that, okay. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, nothing going on with the uh, Integra, nothing exciting yet, but when we do pile into that, I'll make sure to record it this season. But so today, I'm fitting my brand new uh, Dixel Extra Speed pads to the workhorse that is the daily, the stagia, the, um, the mum wagon, what was my daily, um, but I now drive around in a fucked up old Audi A6, which I love, because I don't have to give a shit about. Um, and this thing I did have to give a shit about, but now if anything happens, I can blame it on the missus who's behind there ironing. Um, so I've already run round and loosened off all the wheel nuts and got things ready, because like I said, I want to get on with it quick. So we've got our extra speed pads to uh, see how, how they work out and a new set of discs for the front. The rears are okay. I've got like just OE Brembo stuff all round. And the problem with this car is it weighs 1.6 tons. And um, that's quite a lot considering it's got all aluminium uh, subframes and suspension arms are all aluminium and it's an all alley engine and it's got aluminium front panels and aluminium bonnet and all resin fiberglass front end and plastic boot and everything. And it weighs 1.6 tons. It's probably because it's got like the Skyline running gear in it, which is um, massively heavy. It's not the C34, it's an M35, which is a later one. I prefer it, it's a bit more refined. Um, but uh, yeah, I love it. It's, uh, it's really, I, I love it and hate it. It's super practical, not as fast as you would think for a 280 horsepower 2.5 V6 turbo estate um, with uh, basically all V35 like suspension running, like, but the Atessa system and stuff like that. So it's because it's so heavy, the brakes just are completely by what they're asked to do. They're only like 300 mil discs on the front and I can't, don't even care what's on the rear. Um, but yeah, so with, with, I know they come with 17 or 18 inch wheel stock anyway. When you put the bigger wheels on, bigger tires, the, uh, the torque moment or your lever arm changes with a bigger wheel. So like the, any force you generate at the pad, um, you have to multiply by the wheel size and the disc size as a ratio. And then that affects your, how much uh, braking force you actually have on the wheel. So the bigger your wheels are, you don't change your brakes or your disc size, then the more pressure you have to apply at the pad face, um, all things remaining equal to get the same braking force. So anyway, not enough force. Dixel slash Anthony at TyQ uh, sorted me out with some um, X3 brake pads, which I said to him, like, hey, look, I just need something. I was just whining to him. I need something that's like, little bit better than the stock. I don't want like squeals. I don't want loads of dust. I don't want to wear them out real quick. And he's like, well, I know exactly what you need. So he did get exactly what I need. You know, I'll test them out and get back to you. But um, super, super thankful for him just dropping them off, like posting them to my house. And I was, you know, the bill said zero. So sponsor, it's not even the race car, which is super cool. Anyway, I, I better get on with this because like I say, the lights, the light is dying out. Um, uh, actually, some people said, hey, hey, what about the Clio V6? Okay, so the Clio V6 doesn't actually belong to me. I'll, I'll blank out the um, reg. Um, yeah, the Clio V6 doesn't belong to me. Let's go wide angle on this. It actually belongs to the missus. And the poor state of it, look at this, under these fucking trees. Neighbors cunting trees. Oops, sorry, I'll bleep that out. Anyway, so it's been sat here. It's practically mint because when we met, this is what I used to do. So I, you know, 
So like did a major service on it, cam belts and all that stuff, tarted it up and crap and whatnot and stuff. And it's been re-sprayed since like twice. Um, everything's done. It's just sitting here in a bit of a sorry state. So, but it's, it's one of those like investment things. It's not worth driving because they, they're going up in value. And um, to be honest, to use as a summer car, it's like, it's as much as you can pay to tax. It's like 400 and something quid to tax it. Then it's like 600 quid to insure the thing. And you drive it around for three or four months and oh, so expensive. And all parts are so expensive on it for a Renault. Right now it's like sitting there with its brakes seized on and stuff. So I need to do like a full recommission on it and everything. Um, so yeah, poor old Cleo and well, it's the missus's baby, but we just don't, I wish we had somewhere to store it like inside. That would be nice. It gets covered in shit the whole time, but like it literally, it can't move. You couldn't fucking move it if you wanted to. I have to take all the wheels off. And, and take all the brakes and discs off because, you know, they're, they're all seized solid together. But anyway, um, say la vie. So we'll do what we can on that in some time. Anyway, on to the main task at hand. So I will uh, set this up and cut out some bits and bobs. I'm using two jacks because that's the safest it's going to get because my axle stand, axle, axle stand, my axle stands are underneath the Integra and I'm not going to be bothered to take them off. Wrong ones. Where are they? What you'll see is a lot of me running in and out getting tools. Oh yeah, the car's running on BC coilovers. I got them, they weren't great, they're a bit crashy. It's a bit too stiffly set up for an everyday car. So what I did was I took them off and I revalved them. So instead of running with the position, the adjuster position like wide open the whole time, you'll see how lazy mechanic works on this. I don't bother with any of the recommended nonsense when it comes to working on a car. Tie that up, no, nah, wedge it on the dry shaft. These were squealing, so I thought they'd be a lot more worn than they are, but they really aren't. Eh. Oh, I got a disc to put on as well. Yeah, so I revalved them so that when you, uh, you can run them at a, at a more closed position, just basically, I revalve, took some of the, the shims out on them, on the bump side. So it's a bit softer, so when you run the adjuster position closed, it's not, you're not just blowing through the, the bleed jet. So it's, uh, it's a lot more supple than it was when I first got it. I think it's only on like 10 8 kilos front and rear, which is fairly soft for such a heavy car. Fresh discs. I love fresh discs. This is Nippard. I don't even know who Nippard is, but it's all you can get for this car being an import. It actually runs the same disc as the Nissan 350Z Touring, which is the non Brembo equipped car. But you can't find those discs in the UK anyway, so unless you want to buy EVC, which I don't. Still clean from the last time I did it because I freaking I don't use copper slip. I use a zinc compound. 
It's pretty good. Ugh. Look at this, I broke my freaking handle. So if I push it in all the way, I lose it. Fucking dickhead. I don't know what I should really talk about going through all this because it's fairly straightforward stuff. I'll probably just do lots of lots of cuts. Yeah, let's do lots of cuts. All right, carrier back on. Everything has its torque spec and click. There it is. Click. Right. Oh, new pads. Oh, oh. I didn't even check to see the pads match coming from Japan and all that. Oh, look. Nice boxes. Things of grease. Can you even see that? Oh, just about. There we go. Yeah, nice. Packaging. <laughs> now, there's this little anti rattle thing. But the car has provisions for them on both sides. And the discs only... It was the same with the Brembo. So Brembo's only had it on one side. I stuck it on the inside. Maybe that's why it's squealing. I got it on the wrong side. So I'll stick it on the other side this time and see if it works. Might as well try out the free grease, huh? Why not? I don't tend to put too much of this stuff on because in the UK, there's so much shit on the road that you can end up just attracting more crap onto your car, so whatever, people do it their own way, don't they? I have been talking about going Patreon quite a lot because I really want to, but i just got to get the balls to do the jump because what I'm worried about is if I make the jump, not a jump, it's not a jump, just go and fucking do it, don't you? Go do it and then nothing happens and it's just a complete and utter waste of time because no one wants to to watch. I mean, it won't be me changing brake pads and stuff all the time. Um, it'll be more interesting stuff than that. It'll be more philosophical stuff than than just working on a car. It'll be um. Let's try and escape already. Stay. So yeah, more philosophical things. I've got like, I don't know. There's loads of people who do car builds and and stuff all day long. Um. Oh, I told you to get tools, gotta to go get my pad spreader. Look at that, more light. Lovely. Anyway. I don't even what was I talking about? Ah, Patreon, yeah. So I want to do it. So I think if people are gonna help us out. Because some people seem like they want to. I don't know. Don't know why. But I think I could put some unique content in there. Not just the track reviews. Not just road reviews, track reviews. And um, the philosophical th side, side, the philosophical side behind racing is super interesting to me. Like I say, I don't just I don't just turn up and not do a race and have a party and stuff. I mean, as fun as that side of the thing is. I uh been getting more into like the the you say technical, I mean not not physically technical, but mentally technical aspect of preparing for a race and 
the mindset and it's really interesting because my my biggest step from 2015 season to 2016 season wasn't really, well, there was no change in my driving really apart from turning things down but that was also down with getting the car a bit more sorted um was the mindset i brought to it and what i did what i thought i did was to prepare myself mentally a lot better for races. Races, I was just turning up, having a laugh and doing it and seeing what happened. But now it's like, you start, you, it all starts with, with confidence and positivity in, in yourself. I mean, if you don't think you can do it from the start, you're kidding yourself, you ain't gonna do it. So you gotta have that mental attitude where you're prepared to go out there and say, hell yeah, I can win. Cause why wouldn't you? complete and that's a waste of time going racing if you didn't think you could win from the start the only reason to do it is to go win and that's all I'm interested in doing taking part is fun and not as fun as winning So I'll keep these crusty old pads another time. Oh, not crusty, they're not even old. I should really write on them. Don't be lazy. Pink pen. If you're gonna have a pen, it might as well be pink. Well, that's lucky. The camera just stopped recording on its half hour bite just as I got the wheel on. So, luckily, I didn't miss out much of the nonsense and absolutely nothing that I've been talking about. So, it's not going to be half an hour, it's going to be like 33 seconds or something. Anyway, front done, onto the rear. Oh, got a message. Now, being a total noob at all this sort of stuff, unbeknownst to me, I'd wondered right to the edge of the Bluetooth effective range, I guess. And um, the audio recording started getting really crackly and cutting in and out, so I just can't use it. Uh, so for the last bit, with my head in the rear wheel arch and not facing the camera, I'm relying on the uh, camera's built-in cam uh, microphone, and I've jacked it up as much as I can, so I'll just have to make do with it. Um, I'm not going to dub over it because that'd just be ridiculous, so I've trimmed as much crap out of there as I can and um, I'll have to cover that in another in another vlog sometime so sorry for being such a useless clown when it comes to technology but uh, hey you learn this thing once and you don't do it again hopefully <laughs> Gem DC2 is sent me a message about my last vlog going well done but don't sound like such a sad loser you loser basically but look at the size of this thing there you can see, look at the size of that pad. It's the length of my finger for a 1.6 ton car. It's ridiculous. You can also find these pads on a Renault Colios, Kilios, Colio, or whatever the hell it's called, that little weird 4x4 thing. And I don't think that's quite got the same braking requirements of this, but whatever. Oh, I should have shown you in the daylight. I should have shown, like, why. Actually, let's do that. Before I do this, I want to show you one of the reasons I got this car. There we go. You can't really see. Can we? Can we get a hard light? Oh. Tripod down. Don't drop the camera. The size of the boot. That's that's um, one of the biggest push chairs you can get. And the blue. I don't even want to get hot wheels push thingy. Like my boy doesn't like riding on the push chair quite as much as he likes pimping out on the uh, hot wheels thing. So. He actually arrives at playgroups and doctor's appointments on the blue thing, you know, laid back, one arm on the steering wheel, sub bitches. That's how he rolls. He doesn't do the whole push chair thing. He just rides everywhere on that little blue car thing. Anyway, my point was that this boot is massive. It swallows everything whole. It is the porn star of the estate world. So if you need a massive boot, get one. Cause it's also got these cool levers. Like, these things here, I don't know, can you see? No, you can't really see, can you? It's too fucking dark and I can't get close to holding a tripod. 
Yeah, there you go. These levers. If you give them a tug, the whole front bench just goes. It's a stupid thing to be sold on, but like that's the. When you become a dad, that's the crap that turns you on. Easy fold rear seats. Right, we're just doing the pads on this. I'm gonna get the uh, 14 mil and my pad spreader. Is that 14 still? Yeah, why not? Actually, what you guys should do is, if you see on the back of my hoodie, my advertising, it's a Titherington. Oh no, I have to get a spanner for this one. Anyway, this hoodie is like my favourite hoodie. It's freaking awesome. It's such good quality. Such a good quality hoodie. And I don't know if Luke is selling them or if he's got any left. But message at TBP underscore paint shop. Because it's such a good hoodie. It's like, you know when you go buy a hoodie and, and like, app, like merchandise or stuff and you get it and it's fucking shit. It's like made of super thin, made of 100% acrylic. Not warm, goes baggy, shrinks in the wash. Like this thing is just, it's such a tight, tight hoodie. Love it. Anyway, go get yourself one. If you're nice, he might give you one free. Nah, he won't give you one for free. I don't know how much they are. I don't know if he's selling them. But you should ask him for it. If not, he probably doesn't have many left. But you should all just email him and just like inundate his email server because he lives in the, in the middle of nowhere and he has like dial up and it will just completely ruin his working day. So you should try that. Many unbearable hours later. Look, I tore a hole in my penis glove. I could get another one. One fresh cat's cock glove. Say that three times fast. Uh, okay, so that's the rear pads on. Happy days. I'm gonna put the wheel on. And then I'll do the other side. But you guys don't really need to watch me do the other side, do you? It's kind of boring. So, let's just say, pads done all round. I'll go bed them in, and then I'll drive around them for a while. And um, I'll sort of give my my review on them. And they're bound to be better than what I had on. I just got to, you know, see how, how well they work. I mean, they're going to be better. I just want to know how much better. So, cheers, Tyq. Cheers, Dixel, for um, setting me up with some sweet pads. And, um... Making my missus and my baby safer. And then allowing me to do some winding road action. Wicked. I'm gonna vlog a little bit more inside later on actually. You can have a look at my garage slash shithole, because people have been asking why I don't keep the race car inside. You'll see in a second. This is why I don't keep the the race car in here. It's um Yeah, it's full of shit. Uh, it could happen, I could clean it out, but it won't happen. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway, just got back from uh, bedding in the pads and um, done a few runs, cooled them down, then went out to try them a bit and already, already they feel much firmer than the, the old pads were on them. The old pads were, were, were Brembo OE, so I thought they'd be pretty good in the first place. Uh, but these ones, they seem to have a much firmer pedal already after I've let them cool down and thankfully it's two degrees outside so they're cooling down pretty quickly. Um, so did my bedding in, let the cool down, ran out and tested them a little bit, not too heavily because they are brand new and I let them gas out overnight or something. But um, overall, right at the moment, they're, they're slightly better than what I had in the car already, considering that they have only gone through one, well, I haven't even gone through the first heat cycle already. So I'm really impressed with that so far. And the pedal feel is the best thing. The pedal feel, the initial bike, I'm not having like the old ones, just because the pads are so small for such a big car, you have to like put in a fair amount of like, foot effort even with the servo assistance you've put in a fair amount of uh, pedal effort to um, get the, the first sort of uh, initial braking going and that always catches you out because it's such a heavy car you like you're used to cars with more powerful brakes um don't end up having to keep putting on more and more brake pressure um, to stop the car because it catches yourself up you come rolling up to like someone behind you and you're like oh crap I'm doing five ten mile an hour more than I want to be doing so you have to end up more putting put more pedal pressure and then people in the car are like why are you braking so hard and it's 
just because you judged it wrong. Well, I judged it wrong. So my missus is always telling me, oh, you're breaking so late. And I'm, I'm not breaking late, I'm breaking early, but the brakes aren't very strong. So I end up breaking really strong at the end of the uh, slowdown phase or whatever it is. But yeah, so really impressed with how they're, how they're working so far. So I'll do, you know, a couple more, maybe a week or something like that, see how they go and let, uh, get back to you on, on their performance. But overall, pretty good. So thanks, uh, Anthony, again, uh, TyQ for uh, sorting us out with that. It's um, pretty cool of you, actually. Signing out. Peace.